BRAOU Open University students. Today we are going to discuss about the carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives. Carboxylic acid, generally carboxylic acid, it is a functional group present in the organic compounds and the carboxylic acid is one of the major functional group in the organic compounds and it is having variety of synthetic applications in the organic chemistry. Generally, the carboxylic acid, it is obtained by addition of the hydroxy group to the carbonyl compound and it is going to form as a carboxylic acid here. And the carboxylic acid classification, the class carboxylic acid classification is done by various factors. One is based on the number of carboxylic acid groups here. It is classified into monocarboxylic acid dicarboxylic acid. In the monocarboxylic acid where it is carrying only one carboxylic acid group. So, you can see the some examples in this particular monocarboxylic acid where the formic acid it is having the H C double bond O O H group. So, it is having only one carboxylic acid group. Then acetic acid C H 3 C O O H this is also having only one carboxylic acid group. And propanoic acid, it is having two alkyl groups and one carboxylic acid group. So, it is having only one carboxylic acid group. So, all these are the examples under monocarboxylic acid. And second type of classification is dicarboxylic acid, where it is carrying the two carboxylic acid groups. Examples under this particular category is oxalic acid where the COOH and the COOH. This is your dicarboxylic acid and the name of this dicarboxylic acid is oxalic acid. These two carboxylic acid is directly attached to each other and succinic acid. You can see this succinic acid, the two carboxylic acid groups are separated by two CH2 groups here. So, it is succinic acid and malonic acid where only one CH2 group is present in between two carboxylic acid groups. So, if you observe in all these succinic acid, oxalic acid and malonic acid, so it is carrying the two carboxylic acid groups. So, these are called as the dicarboxylic acids. Next, the carboxylic acid classification based on the, the carbon atoms, carbon compounds here. So, based on the carbon compounds, it is classified into two types. One is aliphatic carboxylic acid and aromatic carboxylic acid. In the aliphatic carboxylic acid, we have only alkyl groups here. In the aromatic carboxylic acid, where the carboxylic acids are attached to the aromatic benzene ring. So, some examples we can see in this particular category, where the aliphatic carboxylic acid it is carrying the RCOOH common substructure here and by replacing of the R groups with various alkyl groups, we will get the different carboxylic acids. For example, if you keep the CH3 in place of R, so it becomes acetic acid. If you keep the three carbons in this particular uh, R group, so we it is be becoming the butanoic acid here. So, these are the aliphatic carboxylic acids, where it is carrying only the alkyl substrain here. And second category is a aromatic carboxylic acid. In the aromatic carboxylic acid, where this carboxylic acid is attached with the aromatic benzene ring. 
So, the common substructure for this carboxylic aromatic carboxylic acid is ARCOOH here. Example is benzoic acid, where this carboxylic acid COOH group is attached to the aromatic benzene ring. So, it is a benzoic acid and next coming to the nomenclature of the carboxylic acid. Generally, the nomenclature for the organic compounds we will follow two methods here. The first method is a common nomenclature and second method is a IUPAC nomenclature and the common nomenclature for the uh, organic compounds. So, generally it is given based on the, the nature of the compound and the existence of the compound and the availability of the compound and the place of availability of these compounds here. And it is not having any scientific any scientific validity and the second type of nomenclature is the IUPAC nomenclature and it is given based on the some scientific rules and regulations here. So, we will see some examples under this common nomenclature where this uh, here is a example under this common nomenclature. HCOOH, where it is a formic acid. The common nomenclature for this HCOOH is a formic acid. Generally, in the Latin, the formica means ant. So, this particular formic acid, it is extracted from the red ants. That is why the name of this formic acid is formed. Next, the second example is CH3COOH. This is the acetic acid. So, in the Latin language where the acetum means vinegar. So, in the vinegar this acetic acid is present. So, we can abstract the acetic acid from vinegar. So, its name is named as the acetic acid and one more example under this common nomenclature is the butyric acid. So, butyrum means butter. So, it is present in the butter. So, based on that source it is named as the butyric acid. So, it is not telling any information about the compound. So, the common nomenclature is not valid and the second type of nomenclature is IUPAC nomenclature. So, in this nomenclature generally it is given based on some rules and the procedure here. So, IUPAC nomenclature it is given based on the four terminology. One is the prefix name and root word and primary suffix and secondary suffix. So, in this uh, four words it is giving different information about the your compound like prefix, prefix indicates uh, the nature of substituent present in the compound and root word indicates uh, the number of carbons present in the compound and primary suffix indicates uh, the nature of the compound, whether the compound is aromatic nature or the aliphatic nature. So, that information is obtained from your primary suffix and the secondary suffix it is giving the information about the, the type of functional group. So, the IUPAC nomenclature is formed by addition of these four words prefix, root word, primary suffix and secondary suffix. So, based on this we are given the IUPAC nomenclature and we will see some examples under this uh, nomenclature. For example, here uh, formic acid this is the HCOOH. So, in this uh, formic acid there is no prefix, uh, prefix word and it is having the root word. Root word generally it is indicating the, the number of carbons present in the compound. So, it is having one carbon. So, its name is a methanoic acid and CH 3 COOH it is having two carbons. So, the root word is a two means eth. So, ethanoic acid and here is a three carbons are there. So, its name is a propanoic acid means the propane three carbons are there. So, propanoic acid and here is a butanoic acid. The common name for this butanoic acid is a butyric acid butter it is extracted from the butter, but here is a butanoic acid. So, but is a uh, root word name here means four carbons it is indicating present of four carbons and here the oic acid oic acid is a carboxylic acid iupac nomenclature suffix here and uh, when you are giving the iupac nomenclature 
So generally, we will give the numbering to the particular organic compound and generally the carboxylic acid functional group gets the first priority in the IUPAC nomenclature. So, we are going to give the first number to the carboxylic acid functional group. So, here in this example, you can see where this carbon carboxylic acid carbon is getting the first numbering number 1 given to the carboxylic acid carbon. Then the second uh, number is given to this particular CH2 group and third number is given to the, the adjacent CH3 group here like that. So, where you can start the numbering from the carboxylic acid group carbon and so here it is carrying the three carbons. So, you can see its name is a 2 chloro propanoic acid because it is carrying the chlorine at second carbon. So, the this becomes a prefix name here chlorine is a prefix name and 2 chloro and propanoic acid is the name of this particular compound. And here also you can see in this example, you can see it is a 2 hydroxy propanoic acid. So, at the second carbon where it is attached with the hydroxy group. So, its name is a 2 hydroxy propanoic acid. And in the dicarboxylic acid also we can give the nomenclature by IUPSC method. So, in this particular dioic acid, we call it as a alkane dioic acid. Here is a two carbons are present. So, the root word name is a eth. So, ethane dioic acid and here is a three carbons are there. Its name is a propane dioic acid and in this example, you have two CH2 groups and two carboxylic acid groups and total four carbons are there. So, the root word number is a four. So, it is butanoic acid. So, like that we can give the IUPAC nomenclature for monocarboxylic acid as well as your dicarboxylic acid. Next, the preparation methods of the carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid are prepared by various reagents and various compounds here. So, the first method where you can prepare the carboxylic acid by oxidation of alcohols and aldehydes. Here is a where we are taking the alcohol or CH 2 OH this is the alcohol here primary alcohol when it is undergoing the oxidation. So, it is giving the aldehyde and this aldehyde further oxidation with oxidizing agents like K 2 C R 2 O 7 K M N O 4 or you can use the nitric acid also. So, these are the oxidizing agents. So, generally the oxidation means addition of oxygen. So, carboxylic acid carrying the two oxygens here. So, in the alcohol and aldehyde you can find only one oxygen. So, one more oxygen is need to introduce in the to get the carboxylic acid. So, here the alcohol when it is undergoing the oxidation with the oxidizing agents. So, first it gives the aldehyde here and this aldehyde further upon oxidation it is giving the carboxylic acid. And in place of R if you by replacing various alkyl groups you will get the different uh, carboxylic acid compounds here. So, here is a in place of R we are taking this particular CH 3. So, CH 3 CH 2 OH. So, it is ethyl alcohol and ethyl alcohol upon oxidation. So, it is giving the ethanol or the acetaldehyde. So, acetaldehyde is a common nomenclature and ethanol is a IUPAC nomenclature and this ethanol further it is going to react with the oxidizing agents and further it is converting into acetic acid or ethanoic acid here. Likewise, we can prepare the aromatic carboxylic acids also by oxidation of the alcohols and aldehydes. So, here is a benzyl alcohol upon oxidation of this benzyl alcohol it is going to form as a benzaldehyde and this benzaldehyde further oxidation with the oxidizing agents like K2Cr2O7 or KMNO4 or nitric acid. So, we are getting the benzoic acid. So, this is the one of the method to prepare the carboxylic acid and by replacing the by keeping the R group right replacing the R groups with the various alkyl groups we are getting the higher number of carboxylic acids. The second method for the preparation of carboxylic acid is 
hydrolysis of alkyl cyanides. Generally, the cyanides are the the another name for this cyanides is a nitrile. So, cyanides upon oxidation upon hydrolysis, cyanides upon hydrolysis, it is giving the carboxylic acid. Here is a RCN alkyl cyanide. So, upon hydrolysis in the presence of acidic medium or the basic medium. So, we can go with the acidic medium or the basic medium. So, it is going to form the carboxylic acid functional group and the ammonia is a byproduct in this particular example. And in place of R, when we are taking the methyl group, so it becomes methyl cyanide and methyl cyanide upon hydrolysis in the presence of acidic medium or the basic medium. So, it is giving the acetic acid and same thing we can go to prepare the aromatic carboxylic acid also. So, by hydrolysis of alkyl cyanides, we will get the benzoic acid and you can prepare the carboxylic acids by using the Grignard reagent. Generally, the Grignard reagent is a organometallic reagent. So, organic metallic reagents where it is carrying the organic part, alkylic part and the metallic part like any uh, magnesium, copper and cadmium. These metals are attached to the organic part. So, we call these are the Greek, uh, organometallic reagents. So, this carboxylic acid can be prepared by using the Grignard reagent or MGX or MGX is a Grignard reagent. So, upon carboxylation of this RMGX, we will get the carboxylic acid. So, where this particular Grignard reagent, when it is treated with the carbon dioxide CO2, so it is giving this particular magnesium halide intermediate compound and upon hydrolysis of this particular ester, magnesium halide ester, it is going to form as your carboxylic acid and this is the magnesium uh, hydroxy halide is a byproduct formed in this particular reaction. So, for example, if you want to synthesize the acetic acid, so in place of R, you take the methyl group here. So, methyl magnesium bromide, the reagent is a methyl magnesium bromide. When it is treated with the carbon dioxide, it is giving the acetic acid here C H 3 C double bond O O H. And you can prepare the aromatic carboxylic acid also by Grignard reagent when we are taking the benzene magnesium bromide, when it is treated with the carbon dioxide CO2, so it is giving your benzoic acid C 6 H 5 CO O H, it is a benzoic acid. Next the preparation of carboxylic acid by hydrolysis of amides, esters, acid chlorides and anhydrates also. So, from anhydrates, acid chlorides, amides and as esters you can prepare the carboxylic acid and it is very easy method to prepare the carboxylic acid. So, first we will take this amide, when this amide is undergoing the hydrolysis in the presence of acidic medium or the basic medium, so it is giving the carboxylic acid. And you can take the ester also, here the ester it is undergoing the hydrolysis in the presence of basic medium, OH minus is a basic medium and H plus is a acidic medium. So, in these both medium means you can use any one of these medium, you can use a basic, basic medium or the acidic medium. So, where it can gives the carboxylic acid and where you will get the alcohol is a byproduct in this particular ester hydrolysis. And acid chloride hydrolysis where uh, it is giving the carboxylic acid is a major product and the hydrochloric acid is the minor product or the byproduct in this particular hydrolysis of amides, anilides, esters and acid chlorides. Next coming to the physical properties of the carboxylic acid. Generally, the carboxylic acid is a having the polar carboxylic group here. So, they can form the intramolecular hydrogen bonding with each other here. So, you can see the you can see this particular carboxylic acid, it is forming the hydrogen bonding with the water molecule here, right. This carboxylic acid, it is forming the hydrogen bonding with the water molecule. So, these carboxylic acids are soluble 
in the water and the only lower carboxylic acids can be soluble in the water right the solubility is due to presence of this hydro hydrogen bonding intermolecular hydrogen bonding between the water and carboxylic acid and the higher carboxylic acids do not soluble in the water because the alkyl part is increases so the non polar group is increases so it cannot soluble in the water because the water is a polar solvent and the alkyl group is a non polar solvent non polar group here so generally the solubility principle is like dissolves like means polar compounds soluble in the polar solvents non polar compounds soluble in the non polar solvents but here this particular water is a polar solvent and carboxylic acid the higher carboxylic acid where the alkyl group is a non polar one so the solubility will be decreases with increase of the alkyl chain of your carboxylic acid so the lower carboxylic acids are soluble in the water and the special characteristic of this carboxylic acid is the carboxylic acid it can exist in the dimeric form here you can see this particular two moles of carboxylic acid they will form the intermolecular hydrogen bonding and they will exist in the dimeric form acidic nature of the carboxylic acid generally the carboxylic acid the name itself is telling this is acidic nature so in the carboxylic acid where it is carrying the h attached to the oxygen so generally the carboxylic acid it easily donates a h plus ion so the acidity means capacity to the donate the h plus ion is the acidity so the carboxylic acid is easily donates the h plus ion so it acquires the acidic nature to the carboxylic acid generally here you see in this resonance form where r c o o h so here the oxygen is a more electronegative atom and adjacent to this oxygen it is having the co group here carbonyl group co group is a it is a electron attracting capacity means it is electro native nature here so where the electron deficient nature so where this lone pair electron on this oxygen it is going to polarize towards this carbonyl group here so this oh bond is it is attracted towards this carbonyl group so where this particular oxygen gains a positive charge and this c double bond o group is formed here then the oxy where this hydrogen is it is very it becomes very weak here so this proton can be removed easily in this way where the carboxylic acid is behaving as a acidic nature and the chemical properties of the carboxylic acid the carboxylic acid having variety of applications and the carboxylic acid it is having the variety of reactions where it is having the c double bond o oh group so we have various of reactions by involvement of the hydrogen and by involvement of the oh group and by involvement of the cooh group and by involvement of the co group here so based on this carboxylic acid group we have four categories of the reactions one is a proton participating reagent reactions hydroxy group participating re reactions carbonyl group participating reactions and complete acid group participating reactions and lastly we have the alkyl group participating reactions so first we'll see the carboxylic acid group participating reactions so in this particular the first one is a proton participating reactions proton participating reactions simple when we treat with the metals we get the the metal carboxylic acids here here is a reaction with metals when this uh, two moles of carboxylic acid is treated with the two moles of sodium metal so it gives the sodium acetate here is a sodium acetate here and when we treat with the zinc metal we are getting the the zinc acetate so we are getting the acetate of the particular metals here and where it evolutes the hydrogen gas in the reaction 
Next, the treatment with the bases. So, when we treat with the base, we will get the water is a byproduct in this reaction and we will get the sodium salt of the particular carboxylic acid. For example, here is a RCOOH when it is treated with the sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a base in this reaction. When it is uh, treated, where we are getting the alkyl sodium alkyl acetate and the water is a byproduct. And in place of R, when we are taking the methyl group, so we are getting this sodium acetate here. Next, the carbonates and bicarbonates. So, when, when we are treated this particular carboxylic acid with sodium bicarbonate NaHCO3. So, it is giving the sodium salt of the corresponding carboxylic acid and it evaluates the carbon dioxide gas and it removes the water. So, here is a 2 moles of carboxylic acid, acetic acid is taken when it is treated with the sodium carbonate. So, it is giving the sodium salt of the carboxylic acid and it evaluates the carbon dioxide gas and water is a byproduct in this reaction. So, same way when we are treated with the carbo calcium carbonate, so we are getting the calcium acetate is a main product here and it evaluates the carbon dioxide gas and the water. Next, the reaction with the organometallic compounds. So, here the carboxylic acid when it is treated with the organometallics like RMGX Grignard reagent, it is giving the alkenes is a major product and same way when this particular carboxylic acids are treated with the alkyl lithium organometallic reagents. So, it is giving the alkenes is a major product in this particular reaction. So, where because in this particular Grignard reagent are like a Gilman's reagent alkyl lithium is called the Gilman's reagent. So, where the alkyl group is acting as a nucleophile. So, this nucleophile is attacking it to carbonyl center of your carboxylic acid and it gives the respect to alkene group here. Next, hydroxy group participating reactions. In this particular example, we have various formation of the products here. So, where the formation of acid halides, where this RCOOH carboxylic acid, when it is treated with the phosphorus pentoxide, it is giving the RCOX, this is the acid chloride. When we are taking this methyl right uh, in place of all uh, R group here, right, acetic acid, when it is treated with the thionyl chloride SOCl2, so it is giving the acetyl chloride C H 3 C O C L is a acetyl chloride and the sulfur dioxide is a byproduct in this particular reaction. Next, the ester formation reaction, when this particular carboxylic acid is treated with alcohol, it is giving the ester as a major product and the water is a byproduct in this reaction. And when we are treated with this particular acetic acid with ethyl alcohol, acetic acid when it is treated with the ethyl alcohol, it is giving the ethyl acetate. So, it is giving the ester, ethyl acetate is a ester compound by removal of the water molecule and uh, anhydride formation. When the sodium salt of carboxylic acid is treated with uh, acetyl chloride, so it is giving the acetic anhydride and uh, amide formation. When this uh, ammonium salt of carboxylic acid, when it is heated at a particular temperature, it is giving the amide RCO NH2 is the amide by removal of the water molecule. So, in place of R, when we are taking this methyl, so this is the uh, amide compound, when it is heated at a particular temperature, it is giving the acetamide is a product here. Acetamide is a main product and water is a byproduct in this particular reaction. And when this carboxylic acid is treated with thionyl chloride SOCl2, it is giving the acid chloride. Next, carbonyl group participating reactions. In this particular uh, example, we have the reduction reactions 
and by reduction we can prepare the alcohols. Here is the carboxylic acid when it is treated with lithium aluminum hydride in the presence of ether solvent. So, we get the major product is the alcohol. So, when the reaction is repeated with the acetic acid in the presence of lithium aluminum hydride reducing agent, we are getting this ethyl alcohol is a major product in this particular reaction. And the fourth category of the reactivity of carboxylic acid is the complete acid group participating reactions. In this reaction, the example is alkane formation. When this sodium salt of carboxylic acid, it is treated with sodium hydroxide in the presence of calcium oxide, it is giving the alkanes. Here is a sodium acetate when it is treated with the soda lime, generally CaO and NaOH, it is called the soda lime. When it, when it is treated with the soda lime, it is giving the methane as a by, methane as a main product here and sodium carbonate is a by product in this reaction. Next Hans Dieker reaction, in the Hans Dieker reaction, generally it is a named reaction, the Hans Dieker is a scientist, he has invented this particular reaction and this reaction is one of the major reaction to prepare the alkyl halides. In this particular example, where the silver salt of carboxylic acid, it is treated with the bromine in carbon tetrachloride, it is giving the alkyl bromide and CO2 is a uh, gas evaluated in this particular reaction and silver bromide is the byproduct in this particular reaction. Here is a in place of R, when we take in the alkyl group like methyl group here. So, here the reaction is repeated with the silver acetate in the presence of bromine molecule and silver uh, carbon tetrachloride. So, it is giving the methyl bromide is a major product and carbon dioxide is a gas evaluated in this particular reaction. Next, Smidit reaction, this is one of the famous uh, named reaction. So, where this carboxylic acid is treated with the hydrozoic acid, N3H is a hydrozoic acid in the presence of acidic medium H2SO4. So, it is giving the primary amines and nitrogen gas is a evaluated in this particular reaction. So, these are the reactions of the carboxylic acid and the R and ester synthesis, where the R and ester synthesis is one of the important reactions for the carboxylic acid and by this R and ester synthesis, you can increase the number of carbons in the carboxylic acid. For example, if you take the acetic acid, you can increase one carbon, you can introduce one more carbon in the carboxylic acid. So, you can get the propanoic acid. If you take the propanoic acid as a starting material by R and ester synthesis, you can increase one carbon and it becomes butanoic acid. So, like that you can increase higher number of carboxylic acids by R and ester synthesis. So, this is the carboxylic acid and the reactions and nomenclature and the reactivity of this one. So, if you see this particular carboxylic acid, generally the carboxylic acid is carrying the COOH functional group and in the COOH functional group, we have this hydrogen. So, it is having the acidic nature and carboxylic acid generally it is uh, these are the strong acids here because the it is carrying the carbonyl CO group. So, where the CO group is a electrophilic nature. So, the bond electrons of this acid group is attracted towards this carbonyl group. So, the hydrogen is loosely held with the oxygen. So, it is easily removed from this particular oxygen. So, it is having the acidic nature. And in the synthesis of this particular carboxylic acid, so you can synthesize the carboxylic acid by using the alcohols, by oxidation of the alcohols and the aldehydes. You can prepare variety of carboxylic acid by using alcohols and aldehydes here. And by hydrolysis of anhydrates also you can prepare the carboxylic acid. So, this is the, uh, this is about the carboxylic acid.